volume of prisms and Cavalieri's principle were at 11.2a. We've got three previous videos for chapter 11 talking about spatial reasoning and they're linked in the description in the geometry playlist. You might need them if you become lost or confused. The volume of a three-dimensional figure is the number of non-overlapping unit cubes of a given size, like one centimeter, one inch, one foot, etc., that will exactly fill the interior of the figure. Cavallari's principle says if two 3D figures have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every level, they have the same volume. Whether it's a right prism or, or an oblique prism, if it has the same height, and like these, this one has a 16 centimeter square cross section here and here, and so does this one. Well, they have the same height, they have the same cross sectional area at every level, they're going to have the same volume. So this is basically what I'm talking about. Here I have two stacks of SAT cards. Both stacks have the same size SAT cards in them. Both stacks have 100 cards. Whether it's a straight prism, like a right prism, or if it's oblique. Both stacks have 100 cards. They both have the same size cards. So that means the cross sections are the same area. They're going to have the same volume. If I tap this back up to make it a right prism, it's the same. Same height, same cross sectional area, same volume. That's Cavallari's principle. We're going to use that in this lesson and in the next one about cylinders. So here's some info for your notes, the volume of a prism. And the volume of a prism with a base area B and a height H is V equals BH. The volume is equal to the base times the height. We find the area of the base and we multiply it by the height. Doesn't matter if it's a right prism or an oblique prism. And the volume of a right rectangular prism with length L, width W, and height H is the volume is equal to the length times width times height. And the volume of a cube with edge length S, cubes have all the same side lengths, we just do S cubed, side times side times side. That would be like the length times width times height. We can find the volume of a rectangular prism using V equals LWH and round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Here we have a length of 16 centimeters, a width of 4 centimeters, and a height of 8 centimeters. We substitute those values into the formula and we get 16 times 4 times 8. Doesn't matter what order we multiply. We can do the 16 times 4 and get a 64 and multiply that by 8, or we could do the 16 times 4 times 8, which is 32. Either way, we're going to get 512 centimeters cubed, or cubic centimeters. For the volume of a cube with edge length 10 centimeters, we're just going to do S cubed, the side measure cubed, 10 times 10 times 10. It's going to be 1,000 centimeters cubed for our volume, or we can write it as 1,000 cubic centimeters. Same thing. For the volume of a right regular pentagonal prism with a base edge length of 5 meters and a height of 7 meters, so this is laying down. We could actually stand this up, couldn't we? So we're still using 7 centimeters as the height. Just imagine it laying down, but that's still the height, okay? The first thing we're going to do is find the apothem A. And we talked about that in Chapter 10, 10.2c. There'll be a link into the description if you need to see that. But we learned about apothems. We're going to find A. So from the center point here to the base, we draw a right triangle on one base. So we have this little right triangle right here, and this dark red line is going to be A, the apothem. And the measure of the angle with its vertex at the center here, this angle up here, is 36 degrees. We did 360 degrees divided by 10. Let me show you how we got that. So we have this pentagon. We drew a line here for our apothem. It was 5 meters across, which means if we split it here like this, we're going to have 2.5 centimeters and 2.5 meters like this. This little angle right up here near the center point is 36 degrees because by splitting this, if we did it all the way around, we'd have 10 of those little right triangles. 
and this circle is 360 degrees, we have 10 triangles, we divide the 360 by 10, that tells us each of these inside angles right here is 36 degrees, okay? So now we know that's 36 degrees, we also know that's 2.5 meters, because it's half of the 5, and that's our apothem A. If you remember from chapter 8, we learned about trig ratios, I introduced them, Sokotoa is for sine, cosine, and tangent, and the T for tangent, O for opposite, A for adjacent, the toa. So we need to find the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite of this 36 degree angle is the 2.5 meter side, and the adjacent side is this A, this apothem. So we're going to have the T over the A, we're going to have a tangent 36 degrees is equal to 2.5 over A. We can multiply both sides by A. We can write it over a 1 to make it easier on our eyes. But what's happening on the right side is the A's are canceling out as a 1, so we're left with 2.5 over 1, or just 2.5, aren't we? And on the left side, we end up with A tangent 36 degrees. So it's like this, okay, right here. We divide both sides by the tangent of 36 degrees, and what's happened, happening here on the this side is, it cancels out as a 1, so we're left with A is equal to 2.5 over the tangent of 36 degrees, the quotient of this, okay? And keep this in mind because we're going to use this now, all right? Now we're going to use the value of A, the quotient of 2.5 and the tangent of 36 degrees, to find the base area B of this one pentagon right here at the end. And we're going to use the base is equal to half this apothem times P, the perimeter. If this side is a 5, then that's 5, that's 5, that's 5, that's 5. That means we have 5 times 5. Our perimeter is 25 meters. We know A is the quotient of 2.5 and the tangent of 36 degrees. We multiply it, putting it into the formula, and we end up with 31.25 divided by the tangent of 36 degrees. That's going to be our base. We're going to use that for our base. We're going to find the volume. The volume is equal to the base times the height, isn't it? And if that's our base, we're going to do 31.25 divided by tangent 36 degrees times that 7 height. It's going to give us this approximation decimal of 43.01, etc. We're not going to round this off yet. In the beginning of the problem, it's said to round to the nearest tenth, but if we wait to the very end to round it, we're going to get a much accurate, more accurate number. So we've got this long decimal. We're going to multiply it by 7, the height. We're going to get approximately 301.08, etc. Now we round it, the 8 tells the 0 to go up to a 1. We end up with approximately 301.1 meters cubed for our volume of this right regular pentagonal prism, okay? So keep in mind that the volume of any prism or cylinder is V equals BH. The volume is equal to the base times the height. And the base, the area of the base, is the length times the width, isn't it? So we would find the 120 times 60 and then multiply it by 8 to get the volume, wouldn't we? Which is how we're going to solve this problem next. We have a public aquarium and it's in the shape of a re rectangular prism. We need to estimate the volume of water in the aquarium in gallons. And it tells us that the density of water is about 8.33 pounds per gallon. We can actually use that information for other problems. It's giving us that. We need to estimate the weight of the water in pounds and it's also telling us that a one gallon of this water is approximately 0.134 feet cubed. We can use that in future problems too. But we need to keep these two things in mind because we need them to solve this problem. So first, we're going to estimate or find out the volume of this aquarium itself without water, okay? So we find the volume of the aquarium in cubic feet. Volume is LWH. So we're going to do the length 120 times the 60 width times the height 8, we're going to get 57,600 feet cubed for our volume that it can hold. 
Then we use the conversion factor, one gallon divided by 0.134 feet cubed, from the hint that it gave us up here. To estimate the volume in gallons, we know the volume is 57,600. We multiply it by that conversion factor that it gave us, and we can actually put this over a 1, couldn't we, to make the multiplication easier on our eyes? So we're going to get 57,600 divided by 0.134 feet cubed. That's going to give us approximately 429,851 gallons that this aquarium can hold. Now we need to figure out how heavy it is, what the weight is, okay? We know it's 8.33 pounds per gallon. We know how many gallons. So the third thing we do is use the conversion factor it gave us that 8.33 pounds per one gallon to estimate the weight of the water. Remember, it told us the density was approximately 8.33 pounds per gallon. So we've got our gallons that it can hold. We multiply it by that conversion factor, and we can even put this over a 1, couldn't we, to make it easier on our eyes. So we get 3,580,658 and 83 one hundredths over the 1 gallon. And it's over a 1, so we're left with the numerator as our pounds. That's the weight of the water in that aquarium. So now we know two things. We know the aquarium holds about 429,851 gallons. We also know the water in the aquarium weighs about 3,580,659 pounds when we round it to the nearest pound. See, the 0.83 rounds it up to a 9. Okay. So that's it for the first part of this lesson. 11.2b and 11.2c are the second and third parts. We're going to talk about the volume of cylinders and a little bit more about Cavalieri's principle. Then we're going to talk about the volume of composite figures in 11.2c for 3D figures. So if, it, if any time you were confused and you didn't know what an apothem was, maybe you you're not really supposed to be in high school geometry, or maybe you missed that lesson in 10.2c where we talked about it. And we introduced trig ratios in chapter 8, 8.2a. We talked about sine, cosine, and tangent, and SOHCAHTOA. And there's links to those videos in the description if you need them. And now you know about Cavalieri's principle that if two 3D figures have the same height and the same cross-sectional area at every single level, then they're going to have the same volume. All right? So I hope this was helpful. I hope you're really having a great day. I hope things are going well for you, and I'll see you next time for the rest of this lesson. Bye.